And I thank Pastor Elliot the opportunity to minister uh, this morning. It is, we serve an incredible God. Oh, He's so good. So good, so merciful, so powerful. Uh, Our enemy trembles, believes and trembles. And uh, there are strategies of the enemy that uh, God just blows away. (laughs) And uh, we're believing for a great morning this morning. And uh, Genesis 24, I want to look at uh, just two verses there. Genesis 24. I was just sitting on here, sitting. I know what I'm going to preach. And I'm looking at people that I know. And uh, I can remember seasons in your life where things were difficult and uh, things were in the balance and the enemy was coming against you and yet God delivered you. And uh, some in your mind, you're sitting here. In fact, this week, conference set some of you free. And you sit here this morning already a new person, refreshed, peace of mind, dominion, a revelation of where you're going and what you need to do. It's powerful what uh, God can do. One of our young men in China, he's back now, uh, Ian Y. Niner, pastoring back in England. And he shared a story how he was uh, going through a season in China. People were drifting out of the church and he was uh, going through a very dark time as a result. As you know, you often beat yourself up. What, what's wrong with me? Uh, you know, and I guess some valid questions. Is it my preaching? Am I lacking people's skills? And he was tormented and very down on himself. And as he was praying, God spoke a word and said, Gideon. He went and uh, picked up his Bible, began to read Judges 6. And so it was when Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up. Also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against uh, them. And then he went on to say, impoverished them. He began to pray. He began to realize that there was an enemy involved. He began, he said, I'm pastor, he said, I don't know what else to pray. I just began to pray against the spirit of the Midianites. Now, I don't know if there is a, such a demon called uh, the Midianite spirit, but... He knew that there was an enemy and he began to pray and people began coming back. How often we blame ourselves. How often we're tormented in our own minds and yet it is the enemy's doing. It's a powerful lesson to realize a devil exposed is a devil defeated. Sun Tzu in his book, The Art of War, said if you know the enemy, and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Paul is going to instruct the church, churches in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11 and say, lest Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So I want to preach a message entitled Possessing the Gates of Our Enemies from Genesis chapter 24. It's it's not an odd passage, but, but it's spoken almost at a wedding ceremony. It's kind of a little, a little funny, not very flowery words. But anyway, we'll look at this. So they sent Rebecca, their sister, uh, uh, and her nurse. This is verse 59. So they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Let's think about that, the gates of those who hate them. Uh, You know, this is spoken, if you like, almost in the context of a a marriage. They're sending away their sister to get married and uh, it's like a father of the bride speech. 
you know, it's not very flowery, is it? It's not my beautiful girl, you know, it's may you possess <laughs> the gates of your enemies. I mean, it's like, uh, but yet it's the perfect gift. It's the perfect blessing. It's like when Jesus sent out his men, he said uh, to them, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. It's when you're living as a Christian in this spiritual hostile world, it, it is a perfect gift, a perfect blessing. It's a gift that's rooted in God's intent found in Genesis 1:28, be fruitful and multiply. That was the drum roll. And have <laughs> dominion. <laughs> We're talking about words that as we sit here this morning affect us because that prayer is rooted in covenant of which we are all beneficiaries. Genesis 22, verse 15 to 18, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Oh, Paul said in Galatians 3.14 that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that you would possess the gates of your enemies. The gates, you know what that means. We've been around long enough. This is where the elders sat, the consultations, the judgments were made. This is where plans were discussed. And you know, it, it, it's kind of like in our day, uh, if in number 10, in, in, is this me? Brother, do I need another mic? Am I gonna... Uh, I feel like I'm going <laughs> to... Come on, Brother Steve Gabriel. Come up here, me and you, brother. We're gonna... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. Praise the Lord. It'd be like if I, we went to number 10 Downing Street. It's about what goes on behind closed doors. I'm not talking about birthday parties. <laughs> We're talking about a COBRA meeting. We're talking about war councils. We're talking about sitting around a table discussing and planning with definite objects and targets. And the Bible said that those gates, those places where our enemies sit and plan and discuss with charts and understanding and plans. It says we are to possess, literally take possession of, dispossess, seize, drive out completely. We are to finish the sentence. You know, we are, we defend the gates of our minds, what comes in. Pastors are the gatekeepers of their churches. Some people are allowed in, some are not. Isaiah 28 verse six says, for a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for strength to, to, to those who turn back the battle at the gate. There's strength as you defend your gates. But this text is talking about an offensive. We are to go where the enemy is planning. We are to go to his meeting and bust it up. We're to rip up his plans. You know what I, there was a, a, a fellow pastor, a man I've known for years, uh, a man I love, have always wanted the best for, but sometimes life happens, difficulties, uh, life. And our relationship was not in a good place, very difficult to, to reach him. 
I have no doubt there were things in his mind about me. It was a, just a, it has been a very difficult period. I pray for him often. And so one day I'm praying and I'm saying, God, what is your mind? The mind of Christ, right? What is your mind? What do you think, Lord, about this brother and what's going on? And into my spirit dropped, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And in a second, I grasped my, my prayers had been, God, help him, Lord, change him, heal him, Lord, help us, et cetera, et cetera. And in a flash of inspiration, I realized that there was a demonic strategy, a, a plan, if you like, that was working. And I began to pray and said, I'm going in the middle of that plan. And I began to pray and bring Ephesians 2 that talks about the power of the cross that breaks down the wall of separation. And I said, oh God, that which has been separated, I speak the power of the cross of Jesus Christ into. I speak His name. I speak His power. I speak His love. And I began to pray. And all I can tell you, four days later, in a car park, the man approached me and gave me a hug and we began to pray for each other. There are marriages that I've begun to pray over in our church exactly the same way, a strategy to bring division. Life is far more spiritual than you think. Far more behind the marriage conflict, the financial setback, the loss in ministries and the problem for me and you is often our situations are begun in the flesh. It's an argument, it's a conflict, it's a misunderstanding. And so because it's often begun in the flesh, we assume it remains in the flesh or that's all it is. But yet the enemy's always looking for a place always looking for a plan and a strategy to get involved. And we fail to see like Saul, a jealous man. And we say, and we look at that and we say, well, he's a jealous man uh, throwing, a, throwing a spear at David. And yet we understand there was a troubling spirit involved. All you see is the mountain. All you see is the person. All you see is the circumstance. We are warned not to give place to the devil. Now, let me tell you something. He understands places, but we often don't. He comes to our gates, but we don't often go to his. And so let's consider that as we move through this message at the plans. Proverbs 20 verse 18 says plans are established by counsel. By wise counsel, wage war. What we are facing is not haphazard, though it feels like that, doesn't it? It just feels chaotic. It feels like, like it's just random. It's just life. And yet the Bible uses words like devices. Isaiah 54, weapons, fashioned, wiles. You've got to understand there is a demonic realm that sits and plans about your life and ministry, plans about your marriage, plans about your finances, sits there and knowing you have studied you as a person and, and, and come up with plans. The Bible says, now there was no blacksmith 1 Samuel 13, 19, to be found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. In every culture is sown thinking that resists God, discipleship and his purposes. And there are many of us and there are those that just don't see these plans against us. A prudent man, Proverbs 22, 3 says, foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Why are you always defeated? My brother, why do you go from one thing, one step, 
two back. Why do you always, it's like you, you come back to the same place, the same argument, the same wrestling in your spirit, same jealousy, same envy, same frustrations. There's a saying that we have when things go wrong. Who is the Jonah in your ship? You know, Oh, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, thanks. Man. And then there, if it happens again. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Jonah in your ship? And we immediately, there's an element of truth in that. But the problem is we always look for the flesh. It's my pastor's fault. It's the wife you gave me. It's the husband. I don't know why that got a reaction. <laughs> is that being said a lot around here or something? What's going on? It's the people in the church. It's people at work. It's the backsliders in the city working against us. And all we see is people. And it's a strategy because it wears us out. We're worn out because we're fighting the wrong thing. Any victory requires knowing the enemy and his strategies. There is a, uh, a team in the, in the English Premier League, soccer team, in the English Premier League called Leeds United. Now they say that Leeds United went from the championship to the premiership because the manager at the time used to send spies into the other, <laughs> other training sessions of the other, he, uh, the other football teams. We're talking about knowing the plans. We're talking about our text is saying, listen, it's time to turn the tables. It's time to turn the tables. It's time instead of on the, on, the def on the offensive, God wants to help you. The Bible tells us about Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 6, the king of Syria is vexed. He's making war against Israel and he consults with his servants. Verse eight saying, my camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying, beware that you do not pass this place for the Syrians are coming down there. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, will you not show which of us is for the king of Israel? Who's the spy amongst us? And one of his servants said, none, my Lord. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. We're talking about a, a supernatural dimension where you get an insight. It is possible. It is the will of God that we begin to get the insight into what the enemy is planning and doing. Many times when we're ignorant, we're in fear. It's like when you, you know something's wrong in your body and they tell you time and time again, we can't find anything. It's almost worse because you don't know what's going on. But when you know, you've got a target of prayer and uh, 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 belief. And so uh, many times we're defeated in life because you don't see it. You don't see that you're in the crosshairs. You don't understand. You don't, you don't see. Paul said, lest Satan should get advantage of us for we're not ignorant of his devices. The context is Paul is saying by not forgiving the offender after their discipline, there's a strategy in that. The enemy will have advantage on us. You know, Pastor Success, Adashida, who I worked on this 
sermon with told a, a story. He was, in, uh, he was pastoring in Nigeria. He's now in Croydon doing a tremendous job. And, and he was pioneering and uh, just getting used to the whole thing. And one night his, his wife uh, woke up. She's screaming. He runs into the bedroom and uh, through, the, through the light coming through the, the uh, window, uh, he could see there was a bat in the room. And, and uh, this bat is dive bombing, you know, and just flying around and basically tormenting uh, Sister Penny. He just, and, and so he, 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 you know, he's new, he sort of grabs a broom and he starts running around the bedroom trying to whack this bat. And, and you know, the bat's down, he's whack, whack, you know, and, and uh, eventually it dawns and we turn on the light. And as soon as he turned on the light, I mean, it was still a little bit of a war, but he had the advantage. The bat was not good in the light. So it is with Paul the Apostle, as this woman possessed with a spirit of divination, it took him just a little while uh, until it dawns on him, hang on, this is a spirit. Many times we, we are battling and uh, uh, somewhere the enemy has an advantage. That's why we're looking at the Ukraine war and we're seeing how often drones are becoming so important to fly over and to see what the enemy is doing. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Matthew 13, 27, 28, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. I want to tell you that revelation can change your ministry. That revelation can change your life. That revelation can ch change your workplace and all that you're dealing with because then it determines how you handle it. It shapes your response. You're not just pulling out tears. You know, there was many years ago when we were pioneering in Norwich, the church was a lot smaller then. And I can remember there was a season when we had probably, I, I'm trying to remember, maybe four or five women that were pregnant. And uh, every, you know, miscarriages, let me just say this, can happen for a, a variety of reasons. Some of them natural, some of them, it's just there's a variety of reasons for that. But in our church in Norwich, and this time there was five women pregnant, and every single one of them had a miscarriage. It was so bad, it affected us so badly as a church, that there was a, a new convert lady who was pregnant. She left church because she was afraid, if I stay in this place, I'm going to have a, have a miscarriage. It was terrible. And, you know, maybe I was, uh, I should have picked it up earlier, but it, it dawned, this is just, as Pastor Greg has taught us, this is not normal. I understand things can happen normally, but this is not normal. And so we as a church, I stood before the church, a young pastor, and just said, I don't, you know, this is not right. And we prayed as a church and said, we, we do not accept this. This is a strategy of the enemy. And we're going to go basically and possess. We're going to muck up those plans by prayer. And we began to pray. Every single one of those women got pregnant again and had a baby. And God brought glory to his name. You see, the, the thing is, many times, let me say this to you. We understand the devil, is in, we see him as intensive, intense. We see him as a roaring lion. We understand his, his violent uh, 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 hatred of us. But somehow we think of God as just kind of, you know, he's up there and he, you know, he's, because he's in control, he kind of, you know, pulls a few strings every now and then, but he's very relaxed. He's very chilled out. I don't believe that. I believe he's the Lord of hosts. Amen. I believe our God wants to fight. I believe our God wants to get involved in your life and wants to help you defeat an enemy that he wants you to conquer and he wants to help us. I say to you, Peter, Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I give to you the keys of the kingdom of God. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He said, I want you to win, son. 
I want you to win. I want you to, I want you to win. You know, one of our young men we just sent out to an area called Chelmsford, just a little bit north of London as a pioneer. And he's a great young man, him and his wife, and very excited. And he gets there and he's only been there a few weeks. And, he, and he's obviously trying to find work, perhaps a little closer to, to where he's at, but it's still possible to, to work in London because of the transport system. But, uh, uh, but he's there a few, few weeks and he gets offered a job uh, of, with, with $18,000 or $20,000 more money a year. That's not bad. It, 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 it's, it's easier transport than the old, old job, but if you're getting paid a lot more money and it's a new job, that, that, that requires stress. They're not paying that sort of money for you to just, you know, that they're gonna want something from you. Not only that, in the new job, he had to go into the office every day Whereas his old job, he had two days at home, which just made it easier in the sense of ministry. And so he was going to take this new job, but then one morning he woke up and he's praying and, he, and it just dawned on him, what am I thinking? I'm not here to get a new career. And so he nearly stepped into a trap. Now this young man had come from poverty. This young man, and I know his story, had come from uh, an Irish background uh, with total dysfunction and, uh, uh, and, and, and just, and here now God's blessed him. You know how it is, he's prospering. Now he's getting off of this incredible job. I am sure there was part of him, the devil said, I know how to get this boy. But yet by the grace of God, he said, no, this is a strategy and, uh, and uh, uh, stepped out of a trap. I'm asking you, who have you been divided from, separated from, that God intended you to be like this? What's lost in your life? What's brought defeat that all began a little while ago in a meeting place called Gates? And they sat and they said, this will work. Well, let's close by thinking about possessing those gates. There's one thing to know what the enemy's planning. The other thing is to take action. It's not uncommon to hear the words, oh, I know the devil's lying to me. Then why are you listening? <laughs> or, or, you know, someone realizing, oh yes, I'm under assault. I'm under assault, the devil's this or the devil's that. But it's possible to acknowledge that, oh, I know I'm under assault, but then still believe that somehow you're helpless. That that's just the way it is. I'm in a fallen world. I'm just trying to hang in there. And, and we try and deal with this, this battle in our own strength with a few muttered prayers. A few little, oh God, help me. The Hebrew, to take possession, means to take possession of, to dispossess, to drive out completely, to seize. We are called to mash up the plans of, uh, plans of the enemy. We're called to get in the very middle of it and bring the kingdom of God in. We're called to bust through the doors of their meeting and walk into the very midst and say the kingdom of God is here, the power of the cross is here, Jesus and his resurrection, Holy Spirit, bring your purposes here. Joshua said to the people of God, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, be strong and of good courage. Listen to these words. For thus the Lord will do to all, your to all your enemies against whom you fight. If you do not fight, you do not have. You will win if you say it's mine. You will turn the corner if you say I'm going right there. Billy Sunday said if you're a stranger to prayer, you're a stranger to the greatest source of power known to human beings. Pastors, I wonder, I wonder what would change in our church if when we began to look out at our congregation 
And you begin to see someone just kind of, and you began to look at them and say, God, show me. I remember praying. I remember, I was going to do this at the end, but I remember there was a, 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 a man who was deeply troubling me in the church. This was many years ago. And uh, just causing me, me problems and issues. And, you know, as a pastor, you know, I, I, you know one minute I'm praying for him. <laughs> and the next I'm praying against him, you know. Lord, do I want to keep him here or do we want him out? You know what I'm saying? Like it depended on the week. One week I'm going, oh God, have mercy on him, help him, you know. And then the next week it's, God, are you going to get him out of here? You know. And God's going, what do you want? You know, what do you... <laughs> the problem was I didn't know. That's the truth. I actually didn't know. And I began to pray one morning in the Holy Ghost. I said, God, you're intervening here. I said, Holy Spirit, I began to speak in tongues. I began to pray for this brother, pray in English, and then speaking in tongues. And I began to find myself praying a completely different prayer. And it dawned on me, he was frustrated with himself about the will of God for his life. He had not been, he was not on the cutting edge and this frustration, the devil, no doubt, telling him he was useless Then he was this. And, and the frustration of all of that, he's taken it out on me. I began to pray for this brother. I began to pray against that, change my whole prayer. No more praying him out, I'm praying for him. I'm not saying you can't pray that prayer. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But, uh, oh Lord, sorry. But, uh, but you know, it's like when, you, when I prayed that prayer, it's like, God, I mean, that brother today is an incredible blessing in our church, to both me personally, me and Carol, but also in our church. And it's just, I wonder, my brother, I wonder what would happen in your church if you began to pray for those that like that. You would say, I'm going to pray against the gates against them. I'm going to pray against, I'm going to find out what the strategy is against, and I'm going to involve myself and bring the power of the kingdom. Uh, amen. There are actions that we take that deliberately counter a known attack. We know and we've learnt that we, in times of difficulty, we give, right? In financial difficulty, you give. It's a counter attack. When you, when you feel like giving up, you witness, right? When you feel like quitting, you share your faith with someone, you, you do something contrary to what you're feeling or what the normal response is. This is what the Bible is saying. We, we, we naturally pull back. God's saying in our text, no, no, I've given you, uh, uh, I want you to go on the offensive and possess because we're part of a covenant of people. I wanna tell you right now, the enemy is very worried about what you might do. It's too long you've been worried about him. He's actually right now uh, uh, concerned about what you might do. Haman told his wife Zeresh in Esther 6.13 and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall, <laughs> this is his wife and his, and his advisors, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but you will surely fall before him. Is he a Jew? He's a Jew. Oh, you're finished. <laughs> because he's part of a covenant people. He's part of a people that God watches over. He's part of a people that God says they're mine. A part of a people that says, God, God says, I want to fight for them. Oh, he's a Jew, Mordecai, you're in trouble, Haman. And likewise, the Bible says in Jericho, uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, Rahab speaks from their perspective in Joshua 2 verse 10. You know the story. Uh, they're afraid of, 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 of the giants in the land, but listen to what's happening in Jericho. As soon as we heard these, no, so let me go back. Joshua 2 verse 10 to 12 
For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, a Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above, on earth beneath. I'm not talking this morning about some simple formula. I'm talking about a battle that we can win. I'm talking about uh, the God of heaven on our side and we on His. I'm talking about uh, in the heat of it, we often give up too early. Ulysses S. Grant said in every battle, there comes a time when both sides consider themselves beaten, then he who continues the attack wins. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17, every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. I close Colossians 2, 15, the Amplified Bible. When he had disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal possession and having triumphed over them through the cross. I wonder, I wonder what would happen in your marriage if you began to pray a different way. I wonder what would happen in your ministry. I wonder what would happen to those that feel like giving up this morning. And you're looking at your ministry, this is the way, I wonder what would happen if you said there's a strategy and I'm not seeing it right now, but I give myself to understand, to see so I can possess it and bring a change. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Dan, let's give him a hand. 